are okay with that um, in the recording. And if you haven't already, if you could turn your mics off, we would be very grateful. The chat function is open, so any questions that you have during the presentation, please do pop your questions in the chat, um, and we'll have a question and answer at the end of the presentation for any questions at all that you might have about life at Frederick Bremer. So first of all, to say again, a huge welcome to all of you. We recognise that the decision about which school to send your child to is not an easy one, and you have to find the school that's right for you and your family. Um, I'm Jenny Smith, I'm the head teacher, and I'm joined this evening by Penelope Hewitt, who is deputy head teacher, and by two of our head students as well, Abu and Alice. Um, so we are all here to give you our perspectives on the school and a little bit more information to help you make the choice. So to start with, I, start, I started with a bit of a bold statement that I believe that this is an exceptional local school in the heart of its community. And I say that because I think it is very special what we do at Frederick Bremer School. Our motto and our vision is all about helping our young people be the very best you can be. And that vision is not just idle rhetoric or a few things that hang on posters around the school. It's something that lives and breathes through all of our work and our practice. Everybody who works at Frederick Bremer School signs up to the commitment that we want our young people to have the space, the opportunities and the great teaching to become the very best versions of themselves. And we do not put limits on that potential. We see our job as educators to find the potential in our young people and help them become the people that they want to be. So at the heart of Frederick Rum School are some really rich relationships. We know um, your children very, very well. We don't put labels on young people. We get to know them, their personalities, their strengths, and where, their potential. Um, we also develop that through what we call our restorative behavior policy, and that meaning that when things go wrong or if relationships are not positive, we expect them to be put right. So we don't operate a purely sanctions policy, or it's a restorative policy that behaviour needs to be mended and behaviours need to become healthy. And inclusivity is at the heart of what we do. We are a very inclusive school um, in all of our practice and doing um, ensuring that every member of our very diverse community does have equal opportunities to be the very best they can be. So to tell you a little bit more about Frederick Bremer School. Um, thanks, Miss. <laughs> when you come to Frederick Bremer School, every single child in this school is inspired to aspire. Now, we want our young people to be in control of that aspiration, their dreams, their hopes, their ideals for the future. We will give them the information, the guidance, and start opening up their thoughts to the possible but we will inspire them to aspire in whatever that future might be. We know, nourish and nurture them. Um, we know our young people incredibly well and really important to us and part of being an inclusive school is to make the school feel safe and to make all young people feel supported so that they have the space to find out who they want to be, discuss their ideas, be critical about the world behind, around them and to be able to shape and mould their thoughts for the future. So a little bit about Frederick Bremer School. Uh, Frederick Bremer School, as we've said, is a very diverse community. Um, where we do have a discrepancy is the girl-boy ratio. Um, we are around 40% uh, girls to 60% boys. That is for no other reason than the fact that there are three local girls' schools. Um, so therefore, the school will never be able to be a fully equal balance in terms of gender. But as you will hear shortly, our girls do not see themselves as a minority um, and they are very well supported and developed at the school. In terms of all of other contextual features, we are very diverse. About a third of pupils who are um, eligible for pupil premium. We have a very high number of pupils that have statements or educational health support plans um, and about another 200 pupils who have some a level of SEM needs. Um, we have over 50 languages spoken and ethnically we are very diverse as well. And we see that diversity within our school community as absolutely being the strength of our inclusive school. So what do we do here? 
Um, well, starting first of all with the very large number of pupils that we have who have got SEND needs. We've got a huge range of SEND needs from physical disabilities, visual disabilities, medical needs, um, to uh, cognitive um, issues as well, and autism. We have got a special resource provision for pupils with autism of up to 30, but unlike resource provisions that you might see in primary, these are pupils who are in mainstream lessons all of the time. The resource provision provides support before school, after school, and lunch times, um, and it's the wraparound care. We have a huge um, SEND team of teachers, HLTAs and TAs who will support all of those pupils um, and they all have a key worker who will work with families and with the pupils um, in school to enable them to be successful. We absolutely see that the achievement of an SEND pupil is of equal worth to every single other pupil in the school. Um, and we will do everything we can to ensure that they leave this school with the very best outcomes um, that they could possibly obtain. So, in terms of our curriculum, in year seven and year eight, all pupils will study the, what we call the English Baccalaureate, um, which is a combination of subjects, English, Math, Science, Languages, we offer French or German, and humanities subjects. And around this, there's a broad wraparound curriculum consisting of things like PE, art, drama, music, technology, computing. Um, our music curriculum in particular is very unique because we're funded by the Music and Technical Schools Trust, which enables every pupil in year seven or year eight to be able to specialize in an instrument, violin, flute, or viola, which they will be taking home and practicing and then being able to use in class along with our peripatetic teachers. Um, and they will have the opportunity to be part of our specialist music provision, join our orchestra, our choirs, our clubs, um, and also be part of the Miss Music School as well, which is a pan London orchestra, and the opportunities to take place in national concerts as well. As they move into year nine, we uh, pupils will start um, building up the skills for GCSEs. We don't specialise in GCSEs in year nine. We view year nine as being a bridging year where they will start to develop the revision skills, the learning skills, and the subject specialist skills to succeed at GCSE. And then when they move into year 10, they will specialize in eight or nine GCSE subjects, English, maths, and science, and then a range of other subjects which they can choose from, including construction, sociology, psychology, media studies, triple science. We have a huge range of subjects on offer um, as pupils move into key stage four. All pupils at the end of the day spend 30 minutes in tutor time. Um, and this is a talk program where we look at anything relating to pupils' well-being. Uh, we also look at things like careers, progression, um, keeping safe online, um, as well as things like study skills and assemblies, which promote our inclusive values are also delivered within that time. And then the last point in terms of pupil grouping, um, which is very unique to Frederick Remmer, is that our pupils are taught in mixed ability groups across every year in every subject with the exception of maths. And that is to enable every single pupil to thrive in a mixed ability setting. Again, it's really important to us that we do not put any labels or caps on pupils' learning. A um, couple of misconceptions to go through, and these are things that parents and carers say all the time when they come in for visits. And the first one is that it seems a really nice school, it's a really friendly school, but the results aren't great. Um, and it is a lovely school, it's a really friendly school, it's a very supportive school, we're a very welcoming school, but our results are also really good. Our results might not be the same um, as the um, other schools in the local area, and that's purely because we are so inclusive. And every single young person in school will get entered for GCSE um, and we will we put as much value on the pupils for whom one GCSE is a fantastic achievement as for the pupils who get nine grade nines. Um, so our results are great and I'll give you a few examples of that. So we work under the principle um, of high challenge, low threat, expecting the very high standards for all of our pupils, but doing this with absolute kindness. And um, when we look at our results for 2019, when we look at the borough results, um, you will see, which will be on the next slide, thank you, um, that our results are very much in line with all of the local 
comparative schools. So obviously the single set schools tend to be the highest achieving, particularly the girls' schools. Um, and then we'll see the whole range of schools in the middle of that line, which have very similar results. Now this is the 2019 results, simply because this was the last year where people sat GCSEs, which were nationally comparable. But when we drill down into that a little bit more, we'll see that pupils did incredibly well um, when we look at the grade nines um, at GCSE, grade nine being the highest grade you can possibly get at GCSE, um, which is an AS equivalent grade. Um, and when you look at the percentage of our, our grades, which were a grade nine, you'll see that in 2019, Frederick Bremer was the highest of the co-educational schools in the borough. And it was only the two girls schools which outperformed us in the results at the very highest end. And then we drill down a little bit more and just look at the girls. So comparing our girls, the performance of girls in um, the local single sex schools and you'll see that our girls in 2019 actually outperformed the performance of the girls in the girls schools and we see that when we look at some of the other results as well which moves on to my second misconception which is that people often say to us um, that girls do better at single sex schools having been a deputy head at two inner city london girls schools I can confidently say to you that girls absolutely thrive in the mixed sex um, school um, and they are really well supported here. Um, our girls are confident, happy, and they do not see themselves as being a minority. And we really deal with the issues that face all members of our community. But for example, when talking about girls, we do a lot of work with dealing with gender-based issues in the school. For example, last term, we did a huge campaign dealing with the issues uh, that, um, with misogyny in our society. So we're not afraid to deal with controversial and sensitive subjects. It's really important to us that we create safe space um, to enable these things to be discussed and uh, for our young people to be able to um, think for themselves and construct their views for the future. And looking at some of our girls' results, you can see some of our girls' results from last year. Um, obviously, these are teacher assessed results, but these girls all performed at the highest level, getting eights and nines across the board. And then when we look at the pupils who have now moved on to university, the class of 2019, you can see example here of girls who have got A stars at A level um, and are moving on to top universities as well. So we are, in essence, a real values driven school where you will see the difference um, compared to other schools that well, you know, this is a school with a really big heart. We really believe in working with you and ensuring that our values about making, making our young people be the very best they can be really shine through. And we do this with kindness and we do it with authenticity. It doesn't mean that our standards are low, our standards are very high, but we don't believe that we necessarily need to be punitive in our approach. Finally, from me, just a little bit about applying to Frederick Bremer because you will be aware and you can see that from the illustration that's on the screen, the school is very popular and we are oversubscribed. So our catchment zone for last year was under a mile and you can see that it has reduced significantly. It does change a little bit every year just due to the change of demographics in the area. Um, and the, we are part of we're community schools, so therefore they're full from first admissions, handled admissions to the school and they operate the admissions criteria so a number of pupils will get in um, on a sibling rule or as they have a statement of educational need. And then the fifth criteria will be distance from the school. However, if you are not able to get a place and you're not given a place at Frederick Bremer on National Offer Day, please make sure you get put on the waiting list because places do come up a lot. This is a very, there is a lot of movement in the borough. So um, most of nearly all of the parents who were on the waiting list last year have now been given places um, for their children at Frederick Bremer School. So it is really worth being placed on the waiting list and staying on the waiting list um, because places do come up. So I'm now going to hand over to Miss Hewitt, who is new deputy head, um, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about how we look after your child at Frederick Bremer. Hello everyone, nice to meet you. I wish we could meet you face to face properly, but uh, nice to meet you virtually anyway. Um, I just wanted to give you my impressions of the school as a newcomer, because obviously your year six students will be newcomers if they join us next September. And I've been along with the current year sevens as someone that's been new to the school. And it's always nice to kind of see something with fresh eyes and, and give you a perception of what it feels like and looks like to be here at Bremer. So my first impressions, 
were very much that when they talk about inclusion at this school, they mean real true inclusion that you very rarely see in mainstream secondary schools in my experience. Um, one of the most noticeable things is that it's a slightly smaller school with less students and a slightly smaller site. Um, so there's a real sense that everybody knows where everybody is and everybody knows who everyone is and all the kids know the staff and it's very, very close relationships. And um, the amount of time and effort that goes into making those kids feel incredibly welcome is really noticeable. And when I did my first duty here um, on the gate duty on, on the first morning, there were about 20 members of staff outside. They'd all come out to greet different students. So TAs had come out to greet students um, who had an EHCP or heads of year were there to meet their year groups. SLT, the senior leadership team were out there. It was absolutely fantastic. And I remember feeling very much part of a community straight away. And the warmth that I felt on that day was really noticeable. They talk about inclusion in schools all the time, but my office is down in the SEN department and the additional needs department on that corridor, which is a huge department. And I was blown away by all the different things they have there. So for example, the provision um, at break time and lunchtime, there are small rooms where different groups of students can go if they find lunchtime or break time overwhelming. And that's not necessarily for your child of special educational needs. Sometimes secondary schools are a bit overwhelming and anyone's down there. And there are kids in rooms doing Lego or doing little bits of art, working in small groups. There are sensory tents down there. There's walls that have been illustrated and painted. It is the most warm and welcoming environment. So it's inclusion in its truest form. The, the equality agenda that the school talks about is absolutely um, true to, 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 to kind of being lived and breathed. So on the first day that I had staff training here, there was some work done on the equality agenda and parents had filmed themselves giving feedback on how they thought equality was explored at Frederick Brenner. And that feedback was incredibly helpful and has helped inform the strategic plan for the year. So you can see there, one of the ways that we're managing equality this year is by sharing out different aspects of that agenda throughout the year. So for example, you will see that next half term, we're gonna be focusing on living with a disability and different departments and year teams have different parts of the equality agenda. And the reason for that is so that every single member of staff, whether you're a teacher or a member of the support staff, whether you're in maths, PE, year eight, takes ownership of this agenda and plans it and delivers it in a way that is inspirational and meaningful for the students. So an example of what that looks like, at the moment it's Black History Month, and that's been explored across the whole school. Every single teacher and every single member of support staff, whether they work in reception or whether they work um, in IT, has come up with a person of black heritage who they find inspirational. Some of those figures are historical. Some of those figures are um, local to the community. And there are displays popping up all around the school about these different figures. We've done assemblies on it. Every tutor has left, led a session on it with their own tutees. I saw one today, which was fantastic. And on top of that, there being um, badge making competitions and celebrating all the things that are going on in the borough. So it really is um, filtered throughout the school. And that's what it's gonna look like all year, whether it's LGBTQ month or mental health awareness week, it will be echoed throughout the year. And I think that that's something that this school can be very proud of and is really noticeably a strength. Um, thank you, Liz, can you change my slide for me, please? And just the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was the provision, um, the kind of intervention pastoral provision, because it's been a really noticeable thing. Obviously, we're coming out of a pandemic or still living with a pandemic, and that's had a huge impact on the mental health of our young people and of all of us, all families um, across the country and across the, the world. And the school is really stepping up, all schools are really stepping up in terms of making sure those students are looked after in terms of their well-being and their mental health. At the moment, there is a huge provision offer within this school for all those things. So for example, they have CAMS here on site. So that's the Children, Adolescent and Mental Health Society. And they um, have individual counsellors and they also do group sessions based on the needs of the students. So for example, year 11, struggling with exam anxiety, there's small workshops going on for that, as well as one-to-one -one, um, referrals if needs be. There are equality champions that the, the students lead. There are mental health champions within the student body. They run LGBTQ plus group, 
to Kavendra, who's a careers counsellor on site, who so does help with progression and careers, and that's at year seven all the way through to year 11. The, the provision and the map is really huge. There is no way I could have put it all on this slide. And it really makes sure that everybody's catered for, whatever their need, whatever they're feeling. The other thing that's really important to mention is that following COVID, um, every school has kept things that work really well. And one of the things that this school has kept is the year group zones. So while kids sometimes move out of their zones for practical lessons like drama or PE or whatever that might be, they're often in the, in the year group zones with their other tutor groups. And up there, the head of year has, has an office and the pastoral support officer for that, for that year group is there as well. Now that is a non-teaching member of staff. And you notice it particularly for year seven that it means they always have a port of call if they're, they've lost something, if it's something as small as they're feeling a bit disorganized or they've forgotten their packed lunch, or if it's something bigger that they're feeling really wobbly or really upset about something, there is always someone trusted for them to go to. And they talk about that a lot here, that there is a trusted person for everybody and there most certainly is. So the pastoral provision is, is exceptional at this school. And I think at this time, particularly, what we all want as parents is that our kids feel safe and, and looked after. And that's a real strength of this school. Um, so they were my noticeable things as a newcomer. But I will pass over to the professionals who have been here for five years and know far more than I. Uh, hi, I'm Alice and I'm Deputy Head of Students. Hi, I'm Adi and I'm Deputy Head of Students. So you're thinking, right? What has this school got to offer that others don't? I too asked myself that question as I walked around with my father tonight five years ago. And what I saw that night was that the teachers and students had a great relationship that consisted of mutual respect, a positive and patient attitude, and a safe learning environment. And as a parent, that is what you want for your child as teachers during the day take on the role of a parent. Only difference is that they're paid and you're not. Inclusivity. Here at Project Bremer, our teachers and staff work hard to bring equal access and opportunities to everyone. We celebrate women's, men's and other ethnic minority days. Being a girl, I can truthfully, truthfully say we are always represented and I've been given the confidence to speak up and try out the new opportunities that arise. I know that the staff at school go out their way to give us the best environment for learning and help us feel safe. If you ever need to talk to anyone, there are your year pastoral support officers, PSOs, counsellors or just your favourite teacher who's there to support those in need. This school has many great opportunities beyond the classroom that if used on CVs look remarkable or most importantly enhances the child's skills and knowledge, such as the programme of the law firm Simmons and Simmons, which goes on past year 11, Duke of Edinburgh, which is beneficial for learning life skills and strengthening a child mentally, and many more. Programmes I took part in myself were the London Football Journeys, which resulted in me getting a qualification, and the London School of Economics and Political Science, where I took part in the Promoting Potential Programme. Diversity. Our school includes people of different backgrounds, and we love celebrating all cultures through different events and lessons. As someone who has been here for over four years now, I believe that everyone understands the importance of diversity. You have better social skills when you're culturally aware, and confidence is increased. It also helps people be more accepting of others and themselves so they feel more comfortable. We want our school environment to be the best place for your children to flourish. Every person plays a part in making the school unique and we always consider everyone's contribution as well as encouraging them to take part. You see, Frederick Bremer is a small school unlike others, which to me is far from a downside. It makes us a family. It turns us into a unit striving towards greatness. And no, I'm not lying, nor was I told to mention such phrases. This is all coming from me. A student who was considered a troublemaker who turned it around with the help of teachers, friends and family, and most importantly, God. I can't give you a day where I haven't felt unsafe in this school or lonesome. Extracurricular. There are many clubs such as a variety of sports before, after and during school. LGBT club, climate change, choir and the annual drama produ production. These have helped me find my passion and can for your children too, and it is a great way to make new friends and represent our school. No matter the interest, there is a club that can accommodate for you, and if not, you can even start up your own club. As well as off timetable clubs, your children can take part in art, drama, music, DT, and food tech, as well as PE. And if none of these spike your interest, you can also apply as a role at, for a role at school, as well as youth health champion, student leader, or even later down the line, head student. Thank you.
Thank you, guys. So, thank you very much for your contributions. We've now got an opportunity to do some questions and answers. So please do put anything you might need in the chat um, and we will answer it. Just while you're thinking about any questions, just a reminder, if you just click onto the next slide, Miss, um, of how you get in touch with us. Um, you can always email us with any questions at school transition at Bremer at Walton School UK. Um, our information about our tours will be get, should be going live on the website tomorrow. But if you want to have any queries in the meantime, pop us an email, or if you need a tour at a particular time, um, please do let us know. And there are stacks and stacks of information on the website if you haven't seen it already. Um, at the prospective families section, there are loads and loads of videos of parents speaking, um, our staff parents speaking, our governors speaking, me speaking, but I think you might have heard enough of me, um, our pupils speaking, um, and the tours of the school, um, which I hope will give you a bit more information as well. So please do use that information too. So, shall we move on to the questions, Miss? Yes, I would love to. Um, so, how is bullying dealt with? Right, so we have a zero tolerance um, approach on any kind of bullying. As we said, we're very much at the heart of the school that we develop um, positive relationships and we work very hard on ensuring that relationships are always positive. Um, if we do have cases of bullying, they are dealt with straight away um, and they are always, always resolved. Therefore, by using restorative strategies, um, we need to ensure that the, the alleged bully always understands the impact of their actions on the alleged victim um, and these issues are resolved and they are able to move on and work well together in the future. There's a question there about uh, students being in their home classes, I think tutor groups. So yes, they do stay in their tutor group all the way up to year 11, but obviously when they take their options, um, in, and then they're in their options classes in year 10 and 11, they'll be in those classes, but they still have tutor time at the end of the day. Those tutor groups don't really change unless there's a specific reason for the head of year to do some tutor group moves, but that's how it works. Um, how do you deal with disruption in lesson management? So in lessons, we have got a very clear uh, behaviour um, strategy, uh, which will involve the teachers giving the pupils warnings. Um, if the pupil um, doesn't respond to the warnings, they will be asked to step outside for what we call a restore and rebuild conversation, um, where the teacher will explain to them why their behaviour isn't acceptable. If their behaviour then doesn't improve, they may be um, what we call parked for that lesson where they are placed in another classroom. If the behaviour is persistently disruptive or if it is causing a danger or making others feel unsafe, they will be removed from that space. Um, and they will be internally excluded while we investigate the incident. Um, SCN question, is there a quiet area for our STEM pupils? Yeah, there's several quiet areas. In fact, there's a good six or seven rooms in the SCN department where students can go for timeouts. The speech and language therapy down there, there's an educational psychologist who comes in. There's small areas where they can be doing quiet activities, including art therapy, and, and, and as the need occurs, students are taken down there for anything that they need. So yes, there's plenty of areas. Um, what do we do to promote healthy food? Oh, lots. <laughs> <laughs> we do. I mean, first of all, to start with the food that is offered in our canteen area, we offer a range of um, hot and cold food, vegan, vegetarian, and all the food is halal as well. Um, all that food has to meet a very high nutritional standard um, and is quite healthy, but we also do promote it across the curriculum as well, um, not just through technology subjects, but we do, um, for example, on a drop down day, um, we'll run um, classes on um, world foods, healthy foods, and what's considered to be healthy eating alongside the sports and promotion of sports uh, activity as well. Um, there's two questions about girls. How do we ensure that girls' voices are heard and what do we do to tackle gender-based violence? So I think they can probably go together. Okay, so we run a lot of people voice groups in the school um, and we have an equalities committee as well, of which um, there is an active girls subgroup. Um, and when issues arise, so for example, last term with the Sarah, tragic murder of Sarah Everard, um, there was a lot of discussion within our girls and within that group 
about what we could do as a community and within the school to ensure that we tackle the issues of misogyny in our society. And that led to a huge um, drop down day and some project based learning and some campaigning um, that our pupils led on. Um, so we do work very closely with our girls. We are um, a very female heavy leadership team um, and we are absolutely committed to ensuring that all our pupils get the very best opportunity. Um, and we particularly um, will advocate for the girls to have their views uh, about gender based issues heard and it's very strong across our curriculum offer as well. Can you talk about any of that app? Yeah, there's there's quite a wide music and art program and performing art. So um, there's going to be a big musical and there's a musical every year, but this musical we're doing Annie. Um, and so they'll be um, auditioning for that and there'll be an orchestra who perform with that. There's um, lots and lots of art rooms and they took part in the E17 um, art exhibition around the mm -hmm. borough, I believe. Um, and there's, there's lots of art clubs that go on. So art is really, really um, valued. You were saying earlier about the art teachers being artists? Yeah, we're professional artists as well. Um, and we also have a lot of um, specialist arts um, artists who come in and work with our pupils on workshops. Uh, we've had run some specialist programs um, through the City of Culture, because our pupils um, in SEN, um, but also we have run opportunities for our pupils to take part in the art trail, for example, and opportunities um, to work alongside artists within the school as well. So there's lots that's always going on, and um, it's a very, very vibrant creative arts department. Can you talk about the, the improvements that we've made in our maths? provision in recent years? Yep, so since obviously maths was one of the issues that was raised in our Ofsted inspection in 2019 um, and even before then we've been doing a lot of work to improve um, the quality of outcomes in maths. We have a lot of new staffing within the maths department, we have done a lot of work on improving the quality of our curriculum um, and the diets within the maths in terms of the quality of teaching and learning and the progress that new pupils are making is incredibly strong and that has been audited by independent verification, external verification, as well as within the school. In the GCSEs over the last two years, I mean, admittedly, they were teacher assessed rather than standardised GCSEs. The math department results are much higher and on, on that trajectory of improvement that we expect and in line with our other high performing subjects. Uh, mobile phone usage? Mobile phones aren't allowed in school. Um, if they're seen, they're confiscated and, there's a, and, there's, and they're taken off them. But the, there isn't a major problem with mobile phones in this school. I think the students have got used to that and I haven't seen many um, out at all. But yeah, they're not allowed to be using their phones in school. It's not like some schools where they can't have their phones on them at all and some schools do bag searches. They're allowed their phone as long as it's switched off and in their bag out of sight and not, not being used. If they need to call home or anything like that, they can always come out and ask us and we'll let them call home or use the office phone. So that's fine, that communication is there too. Um, school exclusion rates? School exclusion rates are now very low and they are lower than national and they're local than, lower than borough exclusions. We will use exclusion if we have no other alternative, but we have such a huge range of interventions and support that we never, ever, ever want to exclude a child. And we will only do it in circumstances where a school has been made unsafe um, or in cases of persistently poor and disruptive behaviour. But that is incredibly rare that we will resort to excluding a child. Uh, so uh, most of you will know because you visited the site that our grounds are very small, but we do make really innovative use of the sports facilities facilities in the school. Um, we run, we have very vibrant um, and sports enrichment and clubs and we are very actively involved in the borough sports opportunities. Um, so we do run cricket, football, basketball, athletics alongside um, other kinds of sport. We've also introduced wall ball this year, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of our pupils are getting involved in. And we also run um, girls clubs, boys clubs, and, in, and mixed clubs as well, mixed both in terms of gender and mixed in terms of year as well, so that pupils can play um, with pupils who are uh, higher level skills and they can get to learn from older pupils as well. And we have sports leaders within the sports um, club. So when pupils um, join our after school clubs, they might get to use some of the local facilities as well um, in order to be able to support their development. Um, 
It's quite um, popular, the sports here. I've noticed at lunchtime and at break time, there's a really nice system where every year group is given a selection of different sport balls. So they get some basketballs, they get some footballs, they get some cricket balls, not too many. So they're not flying around all over the place, but enough to keep them occupied and they share, share them really nicely and play with them. So actually they're playing sports through both break and lunch all the time, which is really nice. They're not real cricket balls, so I need to point that out. <laughs> um, break and lunch, might as well do that one now. Yeah, we run a staggered breaks and lunches. One of the things that has really um, been a positive coming out of the period of working in bubbles is reorganising the school differently. So we have kept our staggered breaks and lunch times, which means that pupils are not at break and lunch time all at the same time, because that was one of the anxieties of pupils in previous years that they found the breaks and lunch times quite stressful. Um, so now every year has their own um, area to use in their break times. They have two 30 minute breaks um, during the school day. So depending on which um, year group they are in, they might have their first break at either 9.30 or 10.30, and then the second break at 12 p.m or 1pm. Um, it means that they're able to get through the canteen very quickly, they're able to sit down and have the space to be able to enjoy their lunch and as Fanella said they're then able to go out to their um, zones and be able to play football, cricket, basketball um, in a safe space um, and with plenty of space for them to be able to enjoy that area. Can we just go back to the question about what would happen specifically if a girl made a claim um, of violence against her because I think that's quite important and they don't feel it was specifically addressed. Yeah, we've done a lot of work um, this year already on kind of our harmful sexual behaviour policy and trauma informed policy and the staff are very well trained and very well educated on how to handle any kind of disclosure of that mm -hmm. type. Um, nothing is ever taken as just being banter, nothing is ever ignored, everything is treated with the weight and the gravity it deserves. Students will have someone that they can come and talk to and space where they can have that conversation and then the appropriate referrals and systems will, will be in place, but that's a real strength. We recently had a safeguarding audit and the school did exceptionally well. Um, and they, they said that, that the training is, is very strong here. Also the provisions, so that we have referrals meetings every week where any students who have had any kind of issues of that type are talked about and ensured that they're being fully supported internally and externally as well. We liaise with lots of external agencies within the borough and within the wider community. So it's really bespoke to each child and each child's need, but the policy is recently been rewritten and, and staff have been retrained on that in light of everything that's been going on recently. And um, what do we do to challenge the um, pupils with high prior attainment in a mixed ability setting? I mean, two years ago, we mixed, moved to mixed ability across the whole school and that, um, because we had previously set in English and the English department felt very passionately that pupils would do better in a mixed ability setting and their results are absolutely testimony to it because what it enables all pupils to do is have access to the highest levels of challenge in the classroom. But it also means that pupils who may be very able in terms of their written skills get the opportunities to listen um, to other debates, other perspectives um, and to um, other viewpoints. And it really pushes them up um, in terms of their ability. So we have seen an increase in performance um, particularly in English across all groups because of the move to mixed ability grouping. And the percentage of pupils that go to university? Unfortunately, we don't have the information about how many pupils go on to university because our pupils leave us at 16 and go to 30, 40 post 16 institutions. We know that a lot of our pupils do go on to university because they tell us, but I couldn't give you an exact figure, unfortunately. There were a couple of questions very specific about SEM pupils, which I put Miss Mills, the same code name into the chat because I think they would be so um, specific to that particular child. We're very happy to help and give advice, um, but I think that needs to be on a one to one basis, if that's OK. So the names in there in the chat. And likewise, we're very happy to do to parents and children who have got SEM needs um, and come and see our fantastic SEM team as well. Have we got any other questions? Uh, I think I've answered them all. Feel free to say again if I've missed anything out. Oh, somebody wanted a comparison with Leighton Star, so if you can just tell them that the data is going to be in 
I mean, the, the data that I showed you a minute ago will be up on the website tomorrow, so you can have a look at those tables. Obviously, that's 2019's data. Year on year, our results are pretty much in line with Leighton Stone. Um, they have quite a similar intake and their outcomes do tend to be quite similar to ours. Um, you know, as I said in the um, earlier, you know, there was paper thin difference in the local schools in terms of performance. So it really is thinking about which school is best for your child. Um, you know, I think, um, obviously I'm a little bit biased, but I do think this is a really special school here. We are utterly authentic. What we're saying to you now is not rhetoric, it's not sandbags. This is what we do all day, every day. We don't play games with the child's education. It is far too important to us and to you. And we really believe in working in partnership with you to really help your child be the very best they can be and go on to whatever pathway route they would like to in the future. Anything else? What kind of things do we give detentions for? It, it really depends on the specific situation, but the, the aim is always to kind of improve behaviour and modify behaviour. There's a very strong focus on the reward strategy here, and there's all sorts of positive things going on. Um, but if a student was persistently disrupting a lesson and had to be removed, they may get a detention for that, or if there's any kind of a more serious issue, they would get attention. But there is a fully, and um, there is a behaviour policy on the website that would give real details of how that works. But before we went to a detention, we kind of usually take them outside the class and have a rebuild and repair conversation to kind of help the student unpick where they're going wrong in a kind of more preventative model. Uh, I think we've covered them all now. So uh, just shout if there's any that we've missed. So yeah, just post any other questions. But like I said, contact us via that email if you have got any further questions. Um, obviously, the deadline for your applications is the end of this month. Um, you will find out about what school your child has been allocated to on National Offer Day on the 1st of March. You'll then have the opportunity to accept the place or not. And that is the time when you get asked to put on the waiting list um, if you don't get a place at Frederick Bremer. And as I said, normally places do come up, if not in the summer term, they come up very quickly at the start of September when people uh, might move out of this area for all sorts of reasons. So please do be persistent with admissions because places do come up in the school and normally you will get placed by the waiting list. Any further questions? Like I say, everything will be on the website tomorrow. Do get in touch if you need anything else. We're real sorry that we weren't able to see you personally this evening, um, but it was been so lovely to see so many of you coming in for tours um, and getting to have a feel of the school during a normal working day. Um, I wish you all the very best of luck. Please do get in touch if you need anything else. Have a lovely evening.